know. <laughs> Seat takes off. <laughs> um, well, uh, it's going to be a real, and, I, and I'm going to tell the team this, uh, what a great honor it's going to be to be able to play in games like these. Uh, growing up, you, know, you always know about the third Saturday in October. We screwed that up and we added more teams, but uh, this is always one of the great traditions in college football is Tennessee, Alabama. Uh, and it's what makes, I think, this place special. It's what makes the SEC special. Uh, so it's going to be a great opportunity for our players uh, and, a, and a good responsibility. Uh, mm -hmm. on how we compete uh, going against a phenomenal football team uh, that's been kind of the standard in college football the last two years. Uh, deep, talented, well coached, we all know about. Uh, from an injury standpoint, let me just give you some rundowns here because I know you're going to ask, so I'll preempt it. Um, first of all, the guys that are out uh, in addition to the standard Oliver Walls and Martin Cody Pope still out. Uh, Greg King, uh, we went in and you know he still hadn't been 100%. I think Greg's got a great future here, uh, but he just hasn't been uh, full go since I've gotten here. Uh, we went in and scoped him, uh, cleaned it out a little bit, and it needed it. Uh, so he's probably going to be on the shelf for the year. Um, let's see. Uh, Schofield, we're going to start working him back. Uh, we'll see today and tomorrow and the next day. But my <clears throat> history has been uh, whether he's available on Saturday or not, uh, the reality is, if so, it'll be a limited role. Uh, and not sure uh, how, you know, you know I, I found out last week, you guys tweet right in the middle of this thing. Is that what y'all are doing? <laughs> yep. Sorry for. <laughs> I, I come back and they go, hey, I heard you said this. I said, well, was it on TV? No, they were tweeting. I'm going. It's a whole other. Um, I don't know where I was. That's why I don't allow cell phones in our meeting rooms. Um, okay, so where was I? We were talking about Schofield. I don't, I don't, even if he is back, uh, I don't know. I, I'm kind of assuming he's out and it's gravy. Um, Dallas, hopefully he'll be a uh, hundred percent. But if he's not, that's a concern because uh, he wasn't a hundred percent last week and he struggled. Uh, Daniel Lincoln, we'll find out today. He's going to kick today. If he's got any problems today, the likelihood of him kicking is is not very good. Montori Hughes, right now, I'm considering him out. We'll find out more in the next two days. Uh, Eichel. Uh, Prentice Wagner, uh, we really have been holding him out of contact uh, all in the open week. We held him out of contact the week before Georgia. We're going to have to hold him out of contact this week. Um, you know, and so that's not good because you're about to play, you know, two of the best backs in the country and we got to tackle. So other than that, we got a pretty healthy squad that we'll be fielding <laughs> on Saturday. So I'll let you guys take it from here. Derek, the, the bye week at Alabama has had to face you know, several teams in a row coming off the bye. What to you is the biggest advantage, not in terms of health, but preparing for a team when you mm -hmm. have an extra week to look at it? Well, it can be an advantage and disadvantage. In fact, I think they did the stats that the statistics show there's no advantage. It's like 50-50. Um, I don't know if that really, you could break it down. Um, it can be an advantage because you obviously have more meeting time. Um, you have more time to work some fundamentals. The, I mean, the obvious things tell you it's an advantage. Um, the disadvantage is you get out of your routine. Um, you're two weeks from, you're, you're a lot longer from the game speed and the tempo. So sometimes teams come out early and it's like, oh man, it hadn't been this fast in a while. Um, sometimes you can overcoach them. You know, you feel like you have all this time and you put in all these plays and got all these great schemes and you go out there and we look terrible. So I, I've seen it work. And then sometimes you grind them so hard in the bye week, they come out flat. And um, I've seen it every across the board. I've seen us coming out of the bye week ripping it. 
Uh, I've seen a team look unprepared and everybody in the stands goes, what did they just do for two weeks? And for good reason. Um, you know, I'm glad we had it because I thought it would help us heal. But then when you hear that, you know, like had we played Saturday, Dallas probably wouldn't have played. Prentice might not have played. Daniel Lincoln wouldn't have played. Montori wouldn't have played. So now whether they play next week or not, I don't know. How much more do you look at them on film? I mean, are, are, are you more yeah. to what Oh, yeah, yeah. But, but you're certainly, you watch them more. Um, but like I said, that can also, you know, you get smarter and smarter in your meeting rooms and then the ability to give it to the players and then go execute it, you can, you can overcoach it sometimes. So it's not how much the coaches know, it's your ability to communicate it to the players, the players to understand it, the players to believe in the plan and to go out and execute it. And sometimes the simplest plan is the best. Going up, against, so. going up against a guy you used to work for, <coughs> some coaches have said, you overthink it because you try and guess what they're going to do. Do you, you see it that way? Um, overthink, you mean what they're doing? Mm -hmm. uh, well, they're, uh, they're complex uh, and always have been. I say that, but the, the base philosophy and ways they win are very simple. It's the right thing. You know, it's, it's stop the run. Uh, it's <clears throat> pressure the quarterback. On third down, uh, it's good return game and special teams to control the vertical field position, and it's run the ball. And that formula has been around for a long time in football, and it's what I believe in, uh, and it's why I was, you know, in, in the same program for seven years because I think that's what works, and they do it really well, and they do it with great players. So that part's pretty simple, uh, but they're very aggressive and good at what they do, and they get complex in the back end sometimes. Um, and, the, you know, I guess you can overthink it and out-scheme them, but it, ultimately the teams that give, uh, has given Bama problems with them, the teams that come out and compete and go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. And they hit them and they go four quarters and they keep putting the pressure on them. They do a great job of tackling, which Ole Miss did a good job containing the runners. South Carolina did a good job containing the runners. Um, but, you know, there's not a lot of plays out there. I mean, they, they've been pretty incredible on defense. We looked at the explosive run tape from this season, and there was like six plays, you know, so. You worked with uh, Coach Saban for a number of years. Mm -hmm. What separates him? What makes him such a <coughs> great college coach? Um, I don't know how to answer that, Jimmy. I, I know that um, – First of all, philosophically, those things that I said that he believes in winning, I think, stand the test of time. So um, he's always believed in that. Okay, uh, he does. He's, he's shown that he's done a great job in recruiting to get really good players, uh, and he's each year always doing a good job of evaluating what they do and how they can do it better. Um, and, you know, he's, he's done a good job of that. And I think that, in its simplest form, lends to success and consistency. If you're looking at film of Alabama this week, could it be like you're looking at film of LSU when he was there? Is it a lot the same? There's a lot of similarities. The colors are different, obviously, but, uh, yeah, there's a lot of similarities. Um, now, you know, schematically, things are different. But when you talk about how they're winning, there's a lot of similarities. I mean, you turn on the film and you're used to seeing that. How, how are you guys? make you feel any better. Sorry. <laughs> how are you guys, maybe, what are some similarities as, as coaches, what are some differences that you guys have? Um, I, I don't know. I mean, structurally and philosophically. I mean, philosophically, I've always believed in what he believes in. And it's, so that's a starting point. And, you know, a lot of our organizational structure is very similar. But we're very different personalities. 
And, um, you know, we have a lot of respect for each other and we're friends. And, uh, but, you know, we do, it's like any coach. You do some things that you, you believe in, some things philosophically the same, but everybody's personality is a little different, you know, and how you put it on the program. Eric, has, has very much surprised you, given the injuries you had, very much surprised you about where Tennessee is at this point? Um, I, I think, you know, John, we always expect more, and we should as coaches. Um, and I, I think if, if I look at what's disappointing and what is encouraging instead of surprised or I would use those two words. Um, you know, there were times when I was disappointed in how we competed, uh, and then there were times I was real encouraged with how we competed. And, you know, given our roster and given our injuries and all that, uh, as much as we want to be in a lot better shape, um, I think what's important is not to go in the tank because the results aren't there. Um, and you stay focused on the process, you believe in the process, you believe in the structure we're putting in, and we're always going to do that. And I think over time, the results will come. And it's hard It's hard to say, don't get frustrated by the results, because that's what we're all measured on. But that is, in fact, what you must do in order to show improvement. Derek, even if it's not a sweep for Corey, when he comes back, what will that do to the other pieces that James has been filling in for several weeks? Yeah. Card right card. Um, I don't know. You know, one of the things that we're going to probably play around with a little bit is moving Shaw to center uh, some. I'm not saying in front of Gooch, but we're going to look at Shaw there. I think the reality of Cody being back, I mean, how much more can you wait before you? Uh, so we'll play with that, you know. Uh, I think in the short term, to answer your question, it means we'll see Schofield and Stone rolling a little bit before we figure out where to go there. Um, I think that's really all it'll affect for now. And then if they both get full steam and playing well, then we got to decide where we go from there. And it just, I mean, there's not a lot of parts there. So see how Dallas is doing. <coughs> The last uh, three games Alabama's running game has sort of been held in check. Are the opponents doing something scheme-wise? Do they just have good players up front? What, what have they been able to do to contain Alabama? Well, I mean, it's a good question. I, it starts with um, beating blocks and running to the football and then doing a great job of wrapping up the runners. But I'm sure there's things on the other end where the other team feels like they didn't do as well, too. So it's always, you know, who knows? Who knows? I know this, we hadn't stopped the run very well or the pass, so that's something we gotta, we're gonna have our work cut out for us as we do every week. Derek, is it particularly difficult with, with a guy like Trent Richardson because you see in games all the time where he's hit, but he just mm -hmm. doesn't go down don't wrap up and hold on for dear life. Yeah, I, th I think the reality is, and the same thing with Ingram, that to, to sit there and put it on one guy, you know, a lot of these, it's, it's okay, that's the free guy. Schematically, we put the extra guy down, boom, they lined it back, you got the free guy. And to put it on him, you're, make, you're, you're fooling yourself because more times than not, he's going to make one guy miss in space. I don't care how good a tackler you are. Um, so even a good tackler, a really good back, and y'all have heard me say this, that a good back makes an offensive line. I've always felt that way. You know, it's that age-old debate. Uh, but when you have great backs, they make guys miss. And then what happens is it generates yards and it generates juice. The O-line gets more confident. They play faster and more physical. So it's critical that the other guys get off the blocks, that you minimize the space to make guys miss.